All right, welcome back to Vida Eats, and we are on our second episode of Invite Only, and today we are at the Gypsy Wagon with Shy, right here. Shy, yeah. Shy. Sounds like I told you, one of like those 1950s dinosaurs. Shy, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and the Jason Derulo yeah. song. Oh, Jason Shy. Derulo. I'm sure that song started with Jason Derulo. <laughs> Every one of his songs started off that way. Anyway. Yeah, so we have the first dish, which she's going to tell us a little bit about. It's a quesadilla tacos with the consomme. And it has uh, three salsitas. And we also have another item that she's going to tell us about as well. So Okay, so it, right here we have our uh, barbacoa birria tacos. And I put cheese in them. And I take the beef. Always high quality beef. And um, I simmer those for many hours. I shred the meat and I do my own sauce mm. with the chilies. Mm. And we simmer it for hours. They're really good. They're nice and crunchy. Mm. That's what I love about yeah, them. Yeah, I noticed because the, the barbacoa is already ready. You had it like simmer in there. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah that, that, that has to take hours. So you started that early this morning? Right? Yes. Wow. Definitely. Mm. That's and a lot more commitment than we've seen from other spots. <laughs> yeah, that's I know. for sure. <laughs> With my food is always quality, that's for sure. And the salsas as well, I made those all homemade. Ooh. I have a green for you and I have two reds. Mm. One so of the reds yeah, okay. is my famous one, which is this one. This one I use for everything. And then I have more of a roasted one, which you have right there. Okay. And that one is more of a smoky taste. More of a mm. smoky flavor if you like that. I hit the style. Yeah. Mm. And then I also have the consomme, which is the broth from the beef. And I re recommend you to dip your taco inside the, that. The size that we love to, espresso size. And this is one of the items that I'm gonna see. Yeah, what you tell us about this little so cutie over yeah. here. So that. it's a grilled, it's a grilled jalapeno pepper, a pickle yeah. jalapeno pepper. Oh, okay. And I made my own little taco out of it with cheese. That's and awesome. I definitely hope you enjoy that. Ooh. Yeah, thanks so much, Shai. Yeah, well, thank you. This is just the first of many courses. Let's <laughs> dig in. Yes, yes, okay. enjoy. Oh, Out and I'll go get you some spoons. Okay. Sure, thank yeah. you. Yes, yeah. thank okay. you. Awesome, awesome. Well, right away, the flavor is great on the consomme. Cheers, Cheers sir. I'm kind of having to stop myself from drinking the whole thing right now. Ooh. It's already a big improvement than the one we had in Oakland at that spot. Oh yeah. Oh. Mm. So I noticed you gave us uh, limes and lemon. Why the tea? Why not just limes? Okay, because <laughs> I love lemon. Mm. Okay. So I'm a big lemon person when it comes to consomme, mm. but a lot of people love limes. Mm. So I offer both because That's good. yeah, because it's um your choice. Mm. It's what you like, but for me, I prefer lemons, and some people prefer lemons. Why do you lime. prefer lemons? I don't know. I think it's <laughs> because you know how lime has in, like a taste that you know it's lime? Yeah. For me, I like the lemon because when you put it inside, you don't necessarily taste the lemon. But you just it have just a enhance. citrus. Yes. Mm. Ah. Yes. And when you put the lime, I feel like it covers up the taste mm. of the consomme for myself. Okay. I'm going to have to put some lemon in there. You try it. Try it any way you like. Okay. As usual, this guy's already dipping it. I'll take the first bite without. Mmm. <laughs> that crunch. That's definitely what we're missing a lot of places that we've been to. Oh. I think it's what we talked about before where with Casabiria tacos, right? It's that perfect level of crunch where it's still crispy, but it's also malleable. You know, mm -hmm. it's not rock hard. Mm -hmm. Whereas that's, that's kind of like where, where we always look for, for the quesadillas now, right? Now that we've had quite a few of them. Yeah. Because usually the problems that we run into is like they're just super soft and rubbery. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I totally understand that. What sauce do you like putting on the consomme? Do you, do you have um, a preference? I would put the red. This one? Yes. And the green. red sauce and the green. I mean, I like putting all kinds of sauces, mm. like everything. I would leave the, the smoky one uh, just for the taco. Mm, okay. Now, would you recommend putting either some lime and lemon into the taco as well? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to try the lemon then. <laughs> after everything you told us. <laughs> I know, I tried the lemon too, right? Yeah. 
So I just want that citrusy. I don't want to be tasting the lime. <laughs> and then after, mm. if you like the lime, then you could definitely add that. I love that she adds the uh, pieces of beef in there. Like, I think that's also what keeps the richness of the flavor on huh? when you have the beef in there and, and the broth versus not having it in there. Mm -hmm. like, I think it adds just so much flavor. Well, it's like what Louis said, right? He likes to keep his meat in the broth. <laughs> <laughs> no pull-out game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, this it. guy's gonna have a lot of those kind of jokes. <laughs> but that's great because you don't know how I am. What I've noticed when we've had quesadilla is just like the whole fact that it's fried or like there's a lot of oil it kind of starts to overpower everything else. Yeah. Over here I can actually taste her meat. Yeah, it's. I will say this though, Shy. I wish there was just a little bit more cheese. Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because then we, we do run into it where. People are putting way too much cheese. Mm. But in this instance, I think I use just a little bit more. All right. But That's the flavor's good. on point. Mm. That's good. We're nitpicking here, folks. <laughs> no, more cheese yeah. for sure. What do you What do you think about the one tortilla, Mike, versus a uh, Yeah, it's we worth it. Mm. Right? Because here she, she cooked it perfectly, so it's not a problem at all. Because yeah. you know, we our favorite one so far was the, he did the double shell. I mean, the outside one was like really crispy. Mm. But here, like, I think you, you cooked it perfectly, so it's not a problem at all. Mm. It doesn't hold it. What do you think? I don't know. It's it's almost like a love and hate with me because I like sometimes that it has two tortillas. It, it kind of balances depending on how much meat you put in there, I guess. But honestly, for the amount of meat you put in there, I think it's pretty much on point. Because you're not stuffing it with hella meat or... Yeah, I think it, know, works. it works. It works, it works, it works pretty well, I think. I did try before. When I first started, mm -hmm. I did try the two tortillas. And the one thing that I noticed that I didn't like personally mm -hmm. was that the outside tortilla was crunchy, but the middle tortilla was soggy. Mm -hmm. And I felt like it took away from the tacos. So that's why I started to dislike the second pot, uh, the second tortilla. And that's the reason why I only started using one. Mm -hmm. But that was just for my tacos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but they're delicious though. I, I like the one. The one tortilla. I don't think we've, have we had. So we had. We had. We right? had. Just it was. It hasn't really been like done correctly. Mm. Like Casabiria is one of those where I could say there's like um, maybe two or three of not really good ones, right? Uh, Santa Ana Amatlan is the gold standard in Mantica. Mm. Then uh, El Muchacho Alegre in, in Napa. Oh, yeah. And then Chicos, yeah, right? Chicos. Chicos in San Mateo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is up there though. Yeah, I like, I like the crunch. It's really well made. I don't. Well, that's the thing too. Is like, I know we talked about having quesadillas in containers because that the steam uh, softens them. Mm -hmm. That's one thing too. You know, like we're having it fresh, and if you're taking it, being getting it for takeout, this is definitely gonna get a little softer. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's gonna play a role if you're gonna eat straight from the the vendor or if you're taking it home. So yeah. something to think about. Usually with um, when I do take them to go, I leave the the onions and the cilantro on the side mm -hmm. and I usually put foil mm -hmm. inside my container. I feel like the foil gives it heat and it actually keeps it a slightly crunchy mm -hmm. compared to with you without the foil. Mm -hmm. That's what I have been doing lately. And I usually pack them at the last second. Mm -hmm. So how did you start making quesadilla? Because we noticed it's something that kind of seems to be more mainstream these days or mm -hmm. before. I don't think I was even seeing it around at all. We'll see. Okay, so this recipe is my mother-in-law's recipe. And um, she did pass away. And before she did pass away, she taught me how to cook a mm. lot. And she taught me uh, how to cook mole Ooh, and barbacoa, mole. which is this recipe. Okay. And she also taught me how to cook many other things. But this is the one thing that she used to make that I was just like... In love with it. Wow, mm -hmm. yes. So every time she cooked, I would always be in the kitchen with her. Like, we, at first, because she didn't speak that good of English, I would just be behind her until she got to know that it was a habit. <laughs> I was always behind her every day. Yeah, and then I learned. So the recipe is definitely her recipe. And the one good thing I love about it too is that people who tried her food before, and then they try my food, they're like, yes, this is hers. Mm. So I know that... It's like she's here. Yes. That's yes. cool. 
and I'm very appreciative that she gave me a very good gift. Wow, well, the legacy lives on with the food, that's for sure. Yes, definitely. Wow. So now let's try the, what do you, what did you call this one again? It's just the grilled jalapeno pepper with cheese. Grilled jalapeno pepper with cheese. And this is a pickled jalapeno, right? Yes. All right, let's try the pickled one. This is interesting, I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> I'm gonna start offering that as well. Yeah, it's so cute. <laughs> it's so adorable, right? Just want a hand from a Christmas tree. <laughs> so the shell itself is the cheese, right? Yes. That would be something good to eat with the taco. Mm. It's definitely mm. spicy. I like the contrast between the cheese and the jalapeno. Don't it remind you of like a jalapeno popper? Yeah. It right? Does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is pretty I like that a lot. Oh. I could definitely see that paired up with like something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also what this helps is if you want, you like things a little spicier and saltier, this would help with that, with the quesadilla. Mm -hmm. Give is me that little thing. Uh -huh. So this is you. So you're serving this to people right now, or this is just a. Uh, this is starting this... next week. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I wanted you guys. Because it's exclusive. the premiere exclusive. Yeah. yeah. Exclusive, right? Invite yeah. only exclusive. <laughs> right. Need to come up with a name for these. Things, <laughs> I gotta. You guys gotta help me. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, what this is, is delicious. Crispy, crunchy jalapeno. Yeah, actually, I, I enjoyed it. And like I said, if you guys pair it with the quesadilla, maybe other dishes, you know, just a, a little bit of that saltiness and. And the, and the spiciness, <clears throat> and it, it helps out with that too. So, man, this is really good. Wow. I can't wait for you guys to see with the chicken style. We're off to a great start. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a big jalapeno guy too, but it just works. Is that really? serrano or jalapeno? It was the pickled, uh, I think the jalapenos. Mm. Jalapeno. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know. The spiciness and then the saltiness, the cheese, and then the pickled aspects like they blend, they mm -hmm. blend so well together. You called it, man. You know what yeah. I can That's see? That's what I like about it. What I would do to add maybe is add a little splash of the vinegar that the mm. jalapenos you pick up. That's what I see. Like I think it would be kind of interesting to see that contrast of that vinegar working with the cheese mm, and the pepper. That sounds so good. I don't know. Let's do it Something. the next round. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. I don't know, for me, I think it's perfect the way it is. <laughs> of course, we'll have our own. I feel like the, the, the vinegar, because it's, it's so strong. Well, that's I what I mean. That's like an a... option you want to give people. Mm -hmm. You like on the side, like this why you would ask people, do you want onions or cilantro in there? Maybe because I'm a vinegar lover. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm what saying. saying. Yeah. Like my wife would love it too. She's like, yeah. I'll put all the vinegar in there. But since think, I'm not a vinegar so, lover, but I think that'd it's be a good, perfect the way it is. A good starting point, because yeah. then you know you could add the little splash of vinegar if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right. just here to make Sam's life hard. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and yes, he does. <laughs> All right, well, we're ready for that. Next All right, time. I'm gonna go get started. All right, All right, here we go. Second item, which is the chicken tacos, the shredded, shredded chicken, chicken shredded, tacos, shredded chicken tacos with the consomme, oh, made yeah. in a quesadilla cut style, right? Yes. So just like with the barbacoa, you already had this simmering too. Yes. Mm. Yes. So tell us how, how you came up with this dish. So with this one, um, I do chili verde burritos, but I also wanted a different kind of burrito. So I was thinking, what can I do to make something else? And I wanted with chicken. So one day I was uh, simmering some chicken and then I shredded it and then I added some other little seasonings, little sauces and I was like, wow, this is so amazing. Mm. So that day I remember the recipe, I never let it out of my sight <laughs> and ever since then I've just been rolling with it. So this is originally a burrito. So what I did is I turned my burrito into the birria style consomme taco. Mm. I 
turned into because my burritos are wet. So it already came with the concentrate. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. <laughs> they are wet. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. It just makes me laugh. <laughs> You're juicy. <laughs> yeah, keep going. I don't know. They don't even need me here anymore. I got shot. <laughs> so now I figured since I already have the the broth, you might as well serve that on the side as well. That's so yeah, this is a this place. is a first right here. Yeah. This chicken consomme. The color is different as well. Yeah, as you can yeah. See. It's a more lighter version because that's just from the seasonings and from the chicken. All right. So like she described. We have the consomme of the chicken, and um, it's quite yellowish, right? Mm -hmm. Yellowish, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely Ch yellow orange. Man, that is good. Mm. And it has the cilantro and cebolla. And I also and put some chicken in there as well. Mm. Imagine when you're sick. Oh, wouldn't you imagine oh, like yeah. having some nice chicken soup? Oh wow! Yeah, right nice. away. Her uh, her consomme game's on point. Oh, it's with really, this chicken one and the uh, barbecue. Yeah, it's beef. it's honestly a really good balance, and the freshness of the cilantro just gives it, you know, it wraps it up. The the, the cebolla gives it a nice burst, a fresh taste, mm -hmm. you know, with the cilantro and cebolla. It gives it the hardiness. The hardiness. Yes. It's just delicious. I mean, it's not too salty. Not it doesn't need anything. Like it's nice and hot. It's beautiful. And the, this consomme is included with your shredded chicken taco mm -hmm. as well. We don't make people order them inside. Mm -hmm. As it should be, folks. <laughs> you serve something Casabiria style, it's gotta come with the consomme. If you want the person to enjoy it, you have exactly, to give the consomme right? because mm -hmm. a lot of people, let's say, they may not want the consomme because you're charging extra. Yeah, yeah. But then you're not gonna enjoy the whole experience. So you have to have the consomme with the taco. I almost drank it all. I was like, I need to save it for this. I know, so I <laughs> and then this time myself. you should eat the jalapeno with the taco. Oh, that's right. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna bite the, the other one. Right, I'm gonna dip, dip, baby, dip. Mm. So I know it's right away. This one has a little bit more cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, more cheese. So easy, so easy. I like it. It's just enough, you know? Mm. But I guess that's one of those things where you never know how much cheese someone wants. Exactly, right? yeah. Mm. And definitely like um, any of the customers say that they want more, whatever it is. Mm. I usually try to make it how they would enjoy it. Actually, you know, you know who's a really good gauge for that is this guy. What? I notice you tend to be more sensitive about the cheese levels. So oh, well. like if Sam says like it's a good amount of cheese, you're hitting a good spot because <laughs> I do like my cheese. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Actually, that's that's pretty pretty good right there as far as the amount of cheese. I think. Yeah, so, Sam's a good barometer for that. <laughs> and with that, along with the what are you calling this again? I forgot. The <laughs> calling it the cutie patooties. <laughs> it's cutie patooties. Yeah, the cutie patooties. <laughs> there you go. And if, paired with that, that's that's pretty dope. Um, yeah. You have to dip it in the broth because it makes a difference. Oh man, it's so good. <laughs> and I added some other green and red salsa in there, which is a good good choice. Mm -hmm. I definitely do recommend to add salsa to the consommes. Mm -hmm. I like it so much as it is already. Oh. <laughs> I kind of don't want to mess with the magic. <laughs> I do want to ask you, like this is so delicious. Even I know you include it with your tacos and like if you have enough left over i don't think it would be a bad idea to just to sell like a bigger portion oh yeah i would definitely because this is just mm -hmm. so good i can see people just ordering this mm -hmm. honestly that's really good and yeah. if they want extra cups i charge 250 for it and i still my tacos the reason why i don't charge that much is because i want people to know that you don't need to charge a lot mm -hmm. to make your tacos delicious you know i want everybody to enjoy it like the whole four dollars, four seventy-five range is way out of my league. Mm -hmm. I won't even really like to go and because you want a lot, mm -hmm. right? You want at least five, six tacos. So at least that way everybody can enjoy it. We've paid some hefty prices for tacos, and sometimes we get four seventy-five for we, one taco. We get tacos. Yeah. So it's it's super. It's a really affordable and delicious meal. Mm -hmm. Anybody can enjoy. Yeah. I definitely do sell the consomme on the side for sure. That's 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 fire. Just to have, like you said, even cold days, you know, mm -hmm. have some of that. Boom, warm you up. 
I feel like some uh, some of the owners, because there was one Cambodian restaurant that I really liked. Mm. And when they first opened up, the food was amazing, right? Mm -hmm. I used to go there especially for the curry and the rice. After a while, they stopped caring. Mm. And then I stopped going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you can tell. Mm. You can tell when they stop caring. And then when they stop caring, that's when it just doesn't make sense to go back. Wow, yeah, makes, makes a huge difference. And only if they knew how much I love the curry. That if they kept it consistent and they kept it the same, they would have still had me until today. Mm. As soon as they switched it, I said, you know, it's not worth it. I can find another place. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. I mean, who knows what happens, right? Maybe it's like you're trapped into having a location and everything has to become more business oriented. Mm. And you start making some compromises just to keep your bottom line nice and fit. Mm. Mm. So can you resist that temptation? No, I can't. Have? <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I cannot. Yeah. Because the quality is my number one thing. Before I give out any of the food, I have to make sure the quality is up to my standard. No matter how much the price goes up or how low, I'm going to always keep it consistent. Fire. If I taste it and it's not the way I want it, I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> so you taste everything um, you cook? Yeah, I taste it. As the, you're cooking it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to get some to go, man, you have, you have to just hit her up, get some, pick them up. Follow me on my Instagram or my Facebook. I usually always post when I'm going to sell. Mm -hmm. What's your Instagram and Facebook handles? The Gypsy Wagon mm -hmm. and also the Gypsy Wagon. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's easy, folks. Yeah. <laughs> easy to remember. And I have my... Why is it Gypsy Wagon anyway? Why is it... Um, because I am Gypsy. Are you? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm Romanian Gypsy. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's and not just because. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a lot yeah, of people no, no, that no, like just Gypsy the Gypsy. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You're the first Gypsy I've ever met. You know, you hear a lot of Gypsies tend to have like a reputation like you guys have some sort of like, secret like witch powers. Or things <laughs> like that. It's true though. That is the yeah. reputation, right? Yeah. How much truth that. is there to that? Are you a witch is what I'm asking. Oh, no. Me? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, but you know the rumors, right? Yes. Well, my sister, she does know how to do fortune telling. Oh, wow. You know? Growing up, they always try to teach me that, mm -hmm. and I was just wasn't into it. I was just never into it. I was always into cooking. <laughs> so you know, they try to force it onto me, and I I always step back. Until today, I never really learned. There's certain things that I have that are just abilities, which is like you can see ghosts. No way. Yes. What What have you seen? <laughs> Back in the day, I used to see a lot of ghosts, like just like spirits walking by or stuff like that. Just saying hi to you? No, just, you see them just walking by. Are they like trying to do something to other people or they're off in their own other world? Yeah, they're, they're all there? in their own other world. Yeah. yeah. Damn. But then I, I would just say, please, I don't want to see ghosts no more. Because <laughs> I would get really scared, you know? So that was one thing, that, thank God, hasn't happened anytime. It's a seagull. Yeah. Spirits too. So. And then another reputation for gypsies is, is that they're nomadic. They move around all over the place. Yes. Right? So at one point, did you stop living in wagons and? Uh, oh, my grandmother <laughs> actually. I wish I could no, find this the is, picture. This is like the gypsy uh, culture. Yeah. Dude. I wish I could find the picture because my grandmother, she actually lived in one of the little wagons. Yeah. So if you wow. see. This is, don't it kind of look yeah. like mm -hmm. a wagon yeah, that yeah, you know yeah, the yeah, style? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my Actually, my grandma did. And growing up, we did move a lot. And I did not like that. I didn't like moving a lot. Yeah. So then as I became an adult, I like to settle down. And you know, just take it easy. Uh, <laughs> my sister till today, they still move around too much. <laughs> I said, oh, how can you do that? That's just the style. Latin San Jose. Yeah. yeah. So, how did a Romanian end up making Mexican cuisine? <laughs> From loving the food. Yeah. I think Been married to Mexico. <laughs> yes. And like I said earlier, growing up in San Francisco had a lot mm. to do with it. You yeah. know, the culture in Love San Francisco the is unbelievable. There's all different kinds of food. Yeah. So I don't just cook Mexican food. <laughs> I cook other things too, but this is what I put my pride into. It's your heart. Yes. Yes, and my husband's mom, <laughs> you know, she helped me get the extra stuff that I needed. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the food is my passion. And that's what made me say Mexican food is what I want to be specialized in. 
Actually, uh, Romanian gypsies are they into the big hoop earrings too? Because I know that's very much mm. a Latina thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah. that's a, a lot of similarities. Yeah. 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 Similarities, right? Yeah, and and the the, yeah. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a very own gypsy. Lion in the flesh. Yeah, we got, so we got some gold here too. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and that's awesome. You're an actual gypsy, because yeah? there are people who are just into like the whole gypsy vibe, right? Uh -huh. So I'm assuming, oh, that's what I was assuming, you, that's why you named it that way. Mm. But you're legit. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll have her need my fortune later. I don't, oh, yeah. You said you don't do that, right? <laughs> so what, I'm really curious, what other kind of like powers do like, gypsies, or, like what are they known to have? Um, fortune telling, seeing spirits and ghosts. You can tell when something good's gonna happen or when something bad's gonna happen. Uh -oh. You get that gut instinct. <laughs> what about uh, like casting like a curse or a spell and stuff? I do know people like that did that kind of stuff, but I'm not one of those people. Yeah. She's not gonna say it on camera. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. not one of those people. She has one of those dolls right there ready, oh, no, ready to my go. God. No, you didn't like no, my no, food? No, no. But have you ever... <laughs> like my tacos? Yeah, no. <laughs> like, but you, have you known someone who's done that and who's actually seen the effect? Oh, uh, yes. I really? Did. Really? Yeah. Wow. Tell us. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I used to live in Los Angeles. And when I lived in Los Angeles, there was a lady there. And um, she was mm. definitely crazy because if she said something mm. about somebody, it would happen. Uh, yeah, so I stood away from her all the time. <laughs> yeah. But how does that work? They just have do they do they have to know you? That person has to just know you or what do they need from you to like It's the jealousy, I think. No, like the person casting a spell, do they need to like see you they or what need, do they like, need? The lock of your hair. Yeah, what do they need from you? It it's the words that she says. It's, That's it? Yes. Wow. And then it's the jealousy that has to do with the words that she says that gives it the power. Yeah. Yeah. It's more about jealousy because the jealousy is a negative and the negative energy pulls toward that and that's how whatever she says that she wants to happen will go toward that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Does it work the other way around with positive vibes? Yes, mm. it does. That's probably why these talks are so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Put yeah. that gypsy magic yeah. into it. Yeah. <laughs> and you gotta light up your sage. Yeah. That's oh. all positive. Energy. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right, so Shasa, what do we have coming up next? <laughs> you will have my famous chicken empanadas. Alrighty. Yes. Ooh. I'm gonna use the same chicken from the tacos, and then I'm gonna stuff it in some masa, and I'm gonna deep fry them. Mmm. Damn. All right. Yeah, we're eating so good today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Third item, which is her famous empanada, the golden rose, yeah. she the, would call it. the pollo chicken empanadas. Mm -hmm. Now, what was it about empanadas that you love so much? I love the crunchiness, mm -hmm. the crunchiness on the outside, and then inside is gonna be more like a tamale. It's gonna be soft and gooey with the chicken, but I love the edges. Oh, the mm. crunchy edges is my favorite. Oh, the right here, the point, that's my favorite. And you recommended just eating these by hand, just right? Just pick them up. You're gonna need some napkins because it's gonna get messy. Okay, yeah. let me grab a <laughs> napkin for myself already. Yeah. Yes. So there you go, just like that. She prepped them up with uh, with some, all three sauces. Um, uh, no, only the two: the red one, the red one, and the green one. Okay, and red I and I green. Sour cream and cheese. Sour cream cheese. and cheese. Now, what you said that the cheese is kind of special here because, as you said, this cheese is not gonna melt. Right? What kind of cheese did you put on here? It's a grated. It's a grated Mexican cheese. It's a hard cheese. Okay. Yes. Mm. And I grate that. It's probably. I feel like it's still really hot. 
It is. So I'm not I'm not really good at eating super I'm, hot stuff, so I'm, I'm gonna give it a little bit of time. So I'm, I love my food. Really this guy hot. loves his food steaming mm -hmm. hot. Me so. too. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. That's my tolerance why... for it's a little bit on the low side. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll give it a little time. Mm -hmm. That's why I always uh, give the food extra hot to everybody because that's my pet peeve. I can't go to a restaurant and eat cold food. I'm like, please no. Yeah, I don't like that either. Ooh. I like to burn a little bit. Well, the thing is, it's better to do it that way anyway, because right? the person can always wait for it to cool down. You can't make it hotter. Really. So, That's a good right. point. Delicious. The 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 dough is is really like not too soft. It's like a nice tech, uh, balance, you know, between crunchy and soft, and it's delicious. You were telling us the story earlier that you you just tasted an empanada and right away you knew that you could make it. Mm -hmm. So what was the what was that story again? <laughs> So there was a little lady in Los Angeles and she hid it in an alley. And only on Saturdays she would sell empanadas this style. And every Saturday I used to love going to her. How did you find her? I went in the alley. <laughs> 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 just no. wandered around. Huh? <laughs> yeah. She no, spends her times in alleys <laughs> back in LA. It's a different life. That's yeah. how I do my recipes. <laughs> <laughs> so I went inside and then you used to see she had like a little setup. And she would sell them I think for two dollars. But they were a lot smaller than mine. And she would top them with all the same ingredients. And I used to love going there. I used to go downtown Los Angeles just for that. And only on Saturday she would be there. And when I used to eat it, I remember thinking, I can make this. I remember thinking, I can make the masa, I can make the chicken. And I tried it. It was a lot of trail trials and errors. Maybe about after a good 10 times, I got down the recipe. And my masa is better than hers. Yeah, you just stopped going down that alley. Yes, <laughs> yes. And I said, you know, now I'm going to start making them. <laughs> You know what you should have done? You should have opened up a spot just a few feet in front of it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Right at the all beginning bad. of that alley so people don't even come down anymore. Right? Uh, walk off the alley. <laughs> that was beautiful though. All right, Sam, what do you have to say about it? I did say it already. Mm. That the masa is, is on, on point. <laughs> the salsas and everything. Oh, man. I do like it to be more salt more salsa so i'm just gonna add more oh yeah definitely yeah that's I, why I like, on the side is definitely i like good the option. salsa yeah i think mixing those sauces is is dope because uh, he did he never really did that like when we you never about, really did it before either man i did it all the time no yeah. he only started doing it i like you know look back at the videos he only started <laughs> doing it like 10 episodes ago no actually, i actually started on the first episode nah yeah <laughs> Because they serve yeah. this place we went to for lengua tacos. They served us red and green, and, uh, and I never seen that uh, red and green in a taco. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna try it out. It was the best thing ever. Mm. Like, wow. mm. I can't believe I never did this before. This is your first empanada. Well, actually, this style. This style, yes, because uh, Filipinos have empanadas too. Oh, I we love were, those. We were colonized by the Spanish as well, but it's obviously <laughs> very different to this mm. because okay. it's more sweeter and it has like a crust. More like a yeah, dough like a crust. really like dough thick dough yes. crust. So it's like a little a pie softer. Crust. Yeah, it's really thick. And actually, I don't like them because of that. Mm. I like thinner like, crust like this. Mm -hmm. I like to get to the meat. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting is um, I know those the edges are the edges saltier than the middle. Well, I think because it gets crunchier, mm -hmm. I think that's why it enhances the salt. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't notice when I bit the edge, it was saltier than compared to when I bit the middle. It's like oh, so. It wasn't as much salt. Actually, for me, I, I prefer the middle part. Ooh, what about you? I'm thinking that it could also be the, the cheese. The cheese, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe it was the cheese. Yes, yeah. that's true. The cheese yeah. is also salty. That was probably yeah. it, because when I took yeah. that first bite, there was a bunch of that cheese mm -hmm. on yeah. there. Yeah. And that cheese is actually salty. Mm. Yes. That's what it was, though. Yeah. Mm. But other than that, I mean, it's the crema, see, the crema is like, can't really taste the crema too much. Mm -hmm. Let me see. It's just more there just to enhance it slightly, you know? Mm. I don't want to overpower it. Yeah, That's so why I always just put a drizzle. Let's say for me, this is dope. The only thing I would be careful with, just as my personal taste, is um, since the cheese is like really salty. Add less. I don't know if it add, add less, but just make sure it, like, it doesn't clump up in okay. certain areas. Uh -huh. then, that makes sense. That's where I took that bite, and that first bite was so really yeah. salty. But other than that, honestly, I have nothing to complain about. I think 
the masa is what the, you're talking about, the, the, the dough or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's like as Sam said, it's cooked to perfection. And it's, uh-huh. and it's just the right thickness too. And yeah. you see how we did it? We did it by hand. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then mixing the green and the red salsa is delicious. And you know what I like about these? These are so easy to eat too. Because they, uh-huh. you know, they're crispy and rigid. Look at that. You can just hold it like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> feels so classy. I might want to like stick my pinky up while I'm eating. <laughs> 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 I'll eat like that. There you go, folks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ta ta. So you're only offering uh, chicken empanadas right now? Actually, um, so when I do, when I do the empanadas, I have a potato mm. and I have the chicken, and I am coming up with a vegan option. Oh. Yeah, so coming soon in the next few months, we're gonna have a lot of vegan food as well. Mm. Are you getting a lot of requests for vegan options? Yes, really? Definitely. Actually, um, this week I'm working on a video taco vegan option. And have you noticed that the people who request for vegan, they tend to be in a certain age range? 20 to 30? Yeah, that's what I <laughs> yeah. thought. <laughs> Millennials. Yes, 20 to 30. Definitely not older. <laughs> yeah. But I, yes, and um, I will definitely, I have cheese ones as well. Mm. So any special request you have that day, I'll definitely make it. Mm. If you wanted me to add cheese no meat meat with cheese and i have potato as well mm. i don't know what else to say oh, and i also actually make philly cheesesteak yeah oh, i did a philly cheesesteak one before and oh. that one was excellent oh never heard of that i'll let but, uh, you guys know when i make that one wow but so you would say that the empanadas are definitely your specialty here at Gypsy wagon yep. yes that's what got me started mm. that's yeah. what made that's how we got the sweat photos right there yes that's what made the raise the roof. Got it started. That's awesome. Definitely. We have one more thing. Uh-oh. One more thing. <laughs> my chili verde with burritos. Oh, oh, oh my lord. I'm gonna be the, the kiss, kiss on the forehead. <laughs> you have to run 10 miles today, folks. Yes. You gotta go to the gym today. <laughs> Hell yeah. I think I'm just gonna walk back to Hayward. <laughs> okay, that's care. easy. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> melty and gooey and shiny that's the look that you're looking for when you get a wet burrito and you want a lot of sauce so it can so you can dip the rest in all right so we are trying the fourth yes <laughs> last but not least it's like chef's <laughs> table <right? laughs> yes. yeah or uh so this is the chili That'll verde go. burritos the wet chili verde burrito they have pork, rice, and cheese. So why did you decide to go right away with the wet burrito? Because that was the style that I was growing up always loving. Mm. Yeah. Well, what would you get? Would you always get red or green growing up? Both. Mm. And you should try the red one. It's sort of like the barbacoa mm. style. And we call those like the, cro- the Colorado beef. Mm-hmm. But it's the barbacoa style. Mm. And that mm. is really good too. But definitely both. Mm. But this is the one that I know I can make really good. Mm. Yeah, you gotta stick with your strengths, so I know what you can be fantastic at. And, focus yeah. On yeah. <laughs> and so far, it's food. <laughs> <laughs> so, this has s- Spanish rice yes. inside, and pork, yes. and cheese, right? Mm-hmm. I'm assuming just like with everything else, you already had the pork simmer in for hours. And yes, then, yes. And the broth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the only Ooh. way. I love I love when it's wet because I like a lot of salsa and stuff. So it, you could just basically just dip it in there, you know, like marinate the salsa with mm-hmm. the, with the food and everything. Mm-hmm. I just love burritos in general, wet, dry. If you want to serve <laughs> you, it up, you don't care. <laughs> you know what's funny is I didn't grow up eating wet burritos. I was used to just eating dry burritos. Mm. You know, having it in a foil. Mm-hmm. So I never really developed taste for it. I never had anything against them. Mm. 
Is that what you were looking for when you said earlier you need you were looking for a chili birthday burrito? Mmm. <laughs> you know what? For some reason I was thinking you're gonna do that poblano pepper. Mmm, that sounds so yeah. good. So like the like uh how you say it? It's like the you know how when you do chiles rellenos? Yes, that's the oh for some reason I thought that's what it was. <laughs> this is delicious too. But the chili rellenos inside a burrito sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. That I don't see a lot of people doing that. Mm. So that I've seen one person who went, but they were closed when we went to go shoot taco tours. They were closed, so we couldn't review them. That actually sounds really good. Mm -hmm. And they have it in taco format too. Mm. I'm sure they were supposed to be open, but when we showed up, they were closed. Coming soon, <laughs> chili rellenos burritos. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm. And that's a great vegetarian option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheese and like you know. The pepper. Mm -hmm. And actually deep fry it like you're gonna make a chili rano and put that inside. Ooh. Yeah. Maybe with a green sauce. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Very good. Uh, the meat's nice and tender, hot. But this is a like a green sauce, right? Mm -hmm. the, the sauce is flavorful. It's not like spice, too spicy or anything like that. It just has really good flavor. <laughs> Full. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's stepping out. Mm -hmm. I could probably knock down a few more bites. <laughs> what are you doing, Mark? Oh, give me a second. <laughs> oh, so cool. Well, that's good news that you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's a really good thing too? Like, let's say if you did decide to take that home. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness, it's so good leftovers. <laughs> I love my leftover wet burritos. Oh, uh, it becomes an enchilada later. Mm. Magically in the container. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It reheats really well. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. What do you mean the meat is cooked perfectly, folks? Mm -hmm. It just falls apart in your mouth, but it still has enough integrity to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not literally falling apart mm -hmm. when you're trying to scoop it up. Mm -hmm. The chili verde, the sauce is really good. I, I find, I don't know, like there's something in me that wants this craving. For, how do I describe it? It's like there's a certain flavor that the sauce has that I would kind of wish it was more. I'm having a hard time describing it. There's a hint of it. Maybe Don't more tomatillos? Toma as well as the tomatillos. Right? Probably. Maybe like, are you looking for like sour? Yeah, just yeah, a little see? bit. Mm -hmm. I would love a little bit more of that. Mm -hmm. Like you can you taste a hint of it. Mm -hmm. But like for my personal taste, I would love that. Mm. Yeah. What do you think, Sam? I don't mind it, how it is, but yeah, I think it would, it would be good to at least try it to see what it would taste like if it had a little more tomatillos. Mm. Um, another thing too that I feel like would go well with this, if you added like some smashed beans mm. somewhere there, I think that would be... Maybe like refried beans on the side? Some, or, or yeah, inside? or inside, that to try it out. I think that would bring it up a notch, but like I said, I mean... Because one thing I do notice is, I don't know what part is a little saltier, but it might be the rice or something. Mm -hmm. But I think the beans would kind of balance that out, you know? That's, mm. what, I, that's what I think. Can you tell us about your approach to this? Because it is kind of like a minimalist approach to Because usually when people make burritos, they pack it like a ton of ingredients mm. in there, right? Mm -hmm. So why did you decide to go with this like minimalist approach? So like before, um, I did used to add sour cream. But what I noticed is that the sour cream used to get mixed up into the sauce and mm. it would make it look creamy inside. That's what you don't like. Right? Yes, and I didn't like that. Yeah. So I took out the sour cream. Mm. And then usually when I would go to like a, a place called Lakershim. So it's on Lakershim Boulevard in Los Angeles. Okay. And um, I used to love their chili verde burritos. Mm. But like you said, they did have that zing from the tomatillos. That's why mm. I knew what you were talking about. Mm. So for me, I took out a lot of the tomatillos. So because you didn't like that zing. Person. Yes. Mm. But I definitely. That's why when you said, I knew exactly mm. what you meant because I do like it, but sometimes. Mm. And then so I took out a lot of the tomatillos to make it more subtle. And then I only wanted rice and cheese, so you can taste the flavors mm. of the chili verde. Mm. And then I didn't add no salsas or anything mm. like that, only because so you can get the true flavor. But if you like to add it on the top, I definitely do yeah. recommend that. No, I like it. Like mm. for me, I like that thing. I would say yeah. no, you don't even don't need that much more. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. This more. is a little bit more because you can taste a hint of it. And since I love it so much, it's like oh, I'd love to have more mm. of that. Yeah. 
And do you usually like, do you give customers lime, lemons or limes or is that un unless they request it? For if burritos. They, for burritos, for no. For wet burritos, Yeah, no, if no. you request it, for sure. And that's mm. because for wet burritos, you don't like that because... Well, I just, I didn't feel like there was like, an, it's necessary mm. for like the lemon on the top or the mm. lime. But if the customer would want maybe the more zinc, yeah. then yes, I would definitely mm. let them try it out. So ed educate me because I'm not a I'm not a chef. Um, why why would you recommend it for like a taco versus a sweat burrito? You would recommend the lime and orange for a taco, but not a burrito. I think because we're so used in society to always see that together. Mm -hmm. So I always assume that like they need to be together. So mm -hmm. like tacos, lemons, and limes belong together. Yeah. And then you never really usually see it with a burrito, so that's why I usually just didn't really offer it. Mm. But I do offer the salsas mm. because me personally, I do like to add like the green because the green salsa and the green sauce is different. I'm gonna try that right now. So at least if you add the green sauce, mm. it will give you more of a fresher take on mm. it because the sauce that I cover the burrito with is more of a simmered sauce. Mm. Oh, okay. I'm going to try that right now as and full as I am. And the green salsa would be more fresh. Yeah. I hope you folks realize the sacrifice I'm making here. What a sacrifice. But yeah, I think that's the reason why I didn't really like give out lemons and limes mm. with the burritos. But it's definitely something I can definitely do in the future. Mm -hmm. No, I think, you know, I think it's great that you have like certain beliefs or certain principles that you're applying to your food mm -hmm. it's just like we we never get to ask why so it's interesting to realize why mm -hmm. you do it definitely this mm -hmm. way but i think you know that makes you that makes your place unique right you, you mm -hmm. do certain things for a reason mm -hmm. yeah, people yeah. don't like it well you know you don't have to get it they just want <laughs> yeah. but at least you're gonna get up out of here something. and then like see with the shredded the shredded chicken burritos those actually add beans too. Mm. But now with the shredded chicken one, I try to make it more of a regular style burrito. Mm. So you know in a regular style that you would hold with the foil and everything, it would have rice, beans, sour cream, and chicken. Mm. But that's where I cover it with the sauce. Mm. Oh yeah, that was, it was really good with the green salsa folks. Mm. Right? Oh, it's delicious. Yeah. It gave it a little bit of more of that zing. Yeah, that exactly. Yeah, that I'm looking for. Mm. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's really good. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> tapping out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Even Sam's tapping out at this point. Mm. How many of these burritos do you think you could cover yourself? One. <laughs> and that's, I'll still leave a quarter of it yeah. until, for later. Yeah, this is like if you haven't eaten all day, <laughs> you want. And how much do you sell these uh, wet burritos for? Ten bucks. Yeah, you get your money's worth, folks. Yeah. I mean, it's it's big, thick, but you oh, know, yeah. it's the ingredients are quality. Mm. And if you want the super-sized one, which oh my is bigger, <laughs> it's bigger than that, that's $15. If you're not going to feed a family of four, it's a super-sized. I can't even imagine a <laughs> I have bigger ones. Oh. Is it the same tortilla or? No, different oh, tortilla. Oh, damn. Oh, it was oh. definitely a bigger tortilla. <laughs> Maybe if I'm done like running a marathon, I'll come here and get that super-sized one. Oh, no. But the, I'm sure these are more popular, right? Because they're smaller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the go-tos, and then so I, have, we, yeah. oh, go ahead. I have people that want the bigger ones. <laughs> so for five bucks more, you get a basically double the, the, the size for everybody. Yeah, I guess that would be the the, the cost-efficient purchase, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. So what are your what are your best sellers? What do you tend to be like making for people the most? It would definitely be everything I gave you today. Okay. So that those are the main ones that's why i wanted you guys to try okay. it. the flagship items yeah <laughs> it would be the barbacoa the birria tacos and uh the crunchy shredded chicken tacos mm. and my burritos and, and uh, those right. are my main four things yeah i would have to say if, if like <clears throat> coming away from this the two i'm probably going to think about the most the shredded chicken taco and the chicken consomme and the empanadas for mm. sure. Mm. See? Those are the numbers yeah, too. Yeah, I'll never forget those. Alright, for me, uh, honestly, because we haven't tried a lot of chicken tacos, definitely you have to try the chicken tacos with the consomme. Those are top notch and uh, for sure the empanadas también. And uh, everything is delicious, but those are like the ones that come to mind and highlight. Unforgettable. Unforgettable. Because I've never, I've never tried the 
chicken consomme like with a dish you know it's like either you're getting that separate like a soup or something but you're not getting it with like a taco so mm -hmm. that's pretty dope i agree yeah <laughs> oh, I, I gotta agree with you with that one because I know that when I when I first made the tacos, I already knew that that was a hit. Mm. The shredded chicken one. Yeah. I was like, wow, I have never seen this before. <laughs> yeah. See, that was my so original. Unique. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. There you go, Gypsy Wagon original. <laughs> that was definitely with that voodoo happy <laughs> positive vibes on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, I guess well, that's a good place to end it yeah. right there, huh? Thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is the second episode for Invite Only. Thank you to Shy from Gypsy Wangin for allowing us to come here and try her amazing food. Thank Shy, you. do you have any like thoughts you want to end with here? I just want to say thank you to everybody who's watching and um, I hope to see you guys soon. And you're always welcome to the Gypsy Wagon. Our food is always high quality and the best ingredients always. Comment down below if you wanted to read your fortune. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then definitely follow me to my Instagram and Facebook for sure. Yep. And that's the Gypsy Wagon. Yes. No underscores, just straight the Gypsy Wagon. Yes. I'll put uh, links down below with all her social medias and uh, don't forget to follow us, I'm Vida Eats and Mike Laguna, Mike and Chris on this YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and we'll see you to the next invite. Don't forget, come order some, some stuff from Gypsy Wagon. Definitely. And if you do, tell them the Vida Eats sent you. Yes, for sure. <laughs> I would like to know who will come from the video yeah, yeah, from yeah, YouTube. Yeah. Who knows, there might be a picture of me on the side of the Gypsy <laughs> Yes, wagon. we gotta get that going soon. Hell no, we're not. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Two orange sodas today, all this great food. Oh man, life is good. Mm -hmm. Life is good. No, orange soda is my favorite soda. <laughs> and I haven't had it in a long time. <laughs> Always uh, positive vibes. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You, don't want no, you don't want no gypsy coming at you. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got positive vibes only, guys. <laughs>